According to Reuters, Asian stocks slid to 11-month lows on Wednesday. U.S. futures dropped and the dollar surged as Treasury yields spiked back toward peaks on fears that U.S. interest rates will stay high. A rebound in U.S. home sales was the latest trigger for concern in the bond market. Corporate earnings have also been mixed. Alphabet shares logged their worst session since March 2020 overnight, dropping 9.5% as investors were disappointed with stalling growth in its cloud division. According to Bloomberg, Stellantis NV has agreed to acquire a 8.5 billion Hong Kong dollars stake in Chinese electric vehicle company Zhejiang Leap Motor Technologies Limited, marking the latest attempt by the carmaker to boost its presence in the world's biggest auto market. Stellantis will buy about 194 million Leap Motor shares at 43 Hong Kong dollars and 80 cents apiece, representing a 19% premium to the stock's Wednesday closing price, according to an exchange filing on Thursday, confirming an earlier Bloomberg News report. As part of the transaction, the companies will set up a joint venture through which Stellantis will manufacture and sell some Leap Motor cars outside China. The JV also gives Stellantis access to Leap Motor's parts and certain technologies. According to Reuters, the U.S. economy likely grew in the third quarter at its fastest pace of any quarter in nearly two years, again defying dire warnings of a recession, as higher wages from a tight labor market helped to power consumer spending. The Commerce Department's advance estimate of third-quarter gross domestic product on Thursday is also expected to show residential investment rebounding after nine straight quarters of declines. Business investment is believed to have slowed as the boost fades from the construction of factories. President Joe Biden's administration has taken steps to encourage more semiconductor manufacturing in the U.S. According to Bloomberg, Oil steadied after jumping Wednesday on signs Israel will proceed with a ground invasion of Gaza, reviving concerns the conflict could escalate and threaten energy supplies. West Texas Intermediate traded near $85 a barrel, after rising 2% in the previous session, while global benchmark Brent was above $90. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said his nation was in a battle for its very existence, and that an invasion was being prepared. According to Reuters, Australian producer Sura Resources on Thursday said it expects buyers outside of China to step up their purchases of natural graphite before stricter export controls on the battery material came into effect on December 1. China, the world's largest graphite producer and exporter, will require export permits as of December 1 for some graphite products, including spherical graphite used by electric vehicle makers. According to Reuters, Australian retailers are ramping up their tech security initiatives, including placing cameras at self-checkouts and body-worn cameras on staff, to combat a surge in stock theft and customer aggression aggravated by the cost-of-living crisis. Top supermarket chains like Woolworths and Coles have flagged a pickup in store theft and hostile behavior, in line with global trends, as higher fuel, housing and grocery costs squeeze shopper budgets and tempers. According to Reuters, Nomura Holdings said on Thursday it is reassessing its mainland China business, as losses mount at its Shanghai-based securities joint venture in another blow to the top Japanese investment bank's global expansion strategy. Nomura's majority-owned joint venture has struggled to grow since its launch in 2019, dragged down by the pandemic and a slowing economy. According to Reuters, the Bank of Japan will end its negative interest rate policy next year according to nearly two-thirds of economists in a Reuters poll, with more now saying the central bank is inching closer to phasing out ultra-accommodative monetary policy. BOJ Governor Kazuo Ueda is seeking to dial back the complex monetary stimulus deployed by his predecessor, but faces a challenging task of doing so without causing sharp and disruptive swings in capital markets. According to Reuters, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi begins a long-anticipated visit to Washington on Thursday, as the U.S. and China seek to manage deep strategic differences and pave the way for an expected summit between Presidents Joe Biden and Xi Jinping. The Middle East war has added a fresh dynamic to the testy relationship between the superpowers and Washington is hoping Beijing could use its influence with Iran to help ensure the Israel-Hamas conflict does not spread to the wider region. According to Bloomberg, the European Central Bank is set to keep interest rates on hold for the first time in more than a year amid growing evidence that its unprecedented bout of hikes is helping to bring down inflation. Following 10 back-to-back -back increases, policymakers will leave the deposit rate at 4% on Thursday, 
according to all 59 analysts surveyed by Bloomberg. According to Bloomberg, NVIDIA Corp. and a Google Venture Fund have joined a seed round of funding for a startup that helps developers squeeze more computing power out of specialized processors used to train AI, potentially alleviating a major logjam for the burgeoning field. Cent ML, which builds software to help machine learning systems work more efficiently, raised $27 million from investors including Gradient Ventures and Radical Ventures. Deloitte Ventures and Thomson Reuters Ventures also took part in the financing, the startup said in a statement. According to Reuters, Standard Chartered on Thursday said third-quarter pre-tax profit fell by a third, trailing analyst estimates, as tax charges and impairment hit its bottom line. Standchart, which earns most of its revenue in Asia, said statutory pre-tax profit for the third quarter of this year fell to $633 million. According to Bloomberg, oil refiners are finding it harder to secure funding for projects as more banks shy away from fossil fuel financing, with plant owners now pressed to show their businesses have cleaner energy goals, executives said. While the business is still profitable, getting financing is increasingly challenging, according to Alwyn Bowden. Chief Executive Officer of Malaysia's Pangarang Energy Complex. From the point of view of many lenders, if you have the word, refinery, anywhere in your title, you're not going to get finance, Bowden told the Asian Downstream Summit in Singapore. According to Reuters, South Korea's Hyundai Motor County reported on Thursday a rise of 151% in third-quarter profit, boosted by solid sales of high-margin sport utility vehicles and a favorable exchange rate. Hyundai reported a net profit of 3.2 trillion won for the July to September period, up from 1.3 trillion in profit a year earlier. According to Bloomberg, SK Hynix Inc. declared its opposition to a merger of Kioxia Holdings Corp. and Western Digital Corp., introducing more uncertainty to a landmark U.S.-Japanese deal years in the making. The world's number two memory chipmaker, a shareholder in the Japanese chipmaker, says the transaction undervalued its stake. According to Reuters, soaring U.S. Treasury yields are further boosting the appeal of bonds over stocks, deepening an already painful equity sell-off while threatening to weigh on equity performance over the long term. Bond yields near historic lows bolstered the attractiveness of stocks over the past 15 years, when the U.S. Federal Reserve kept rates near zero to support the economy following the 2008 financial crisis. According to Reuters, BNP Paribas, the Eurozone's biggest bank, posted inline quarterly results on Thursday, as a jump in corporate financing services offset the continued retreat in trading revenue. The French lender's third quarter net income dropped by 4% from a year earlier on a reported basis to 2.66 billion euros, almost matching the 2.64 billion euro analyst consensus compiled by the company. According to Reuters, Israeli ground forces operated within the northern Gaza Strip on Thursday, attacking multiple Hamas targets before withdrawing, the military said in a statement on what Israel's army radio described as the biggest incursion of the current war. Video of the overnight action issued by the military showed armored vehicles proceeding through a sandy border zone. A bulldozer is seen leveling part of a raised bank, tanks fire shells, and explosions are seen near or amid a row of damaged buildings. According to Reuters, Mercedes-Benz expects the adjusted return on sales of its cars division for the full year to hit the lower end of its 12-14% to forecast, the company said on Thursday, as it reported a drop in third-quarter earnings due partly to lower deliveries. Earnings before interest and taxes across the Mercedes-Benz group fell 6.8% to €4.8 billion Euros with revenue down 1.4% at €37.2 billion. Euros. According to Bloomberg, Asian stocks are set to tumble to their lowest in nearly a year while U.S. futures extended declines as a batch of poor corporate earnings soured sentiment. Currency traders were on edge after the yen weakened past a key level. The MSCI Asia-Pacific index fell over 1.5 percent, with benchmarks in South Korea and Japan sliding more than 2 percent each. The moves tracked Wall Street's weakness driven by Meta Inc., uncertain earnings outlook and Google parent Alphabet Inc.'s disappointing cloud figures. Stocks in Hong Kong and mainland China erased gains from the previous session when fresh stimulus measures soothed sentiment. According to Reuters, 
French catering and food services group Sodexo on Thursday said it planned to list its voucher and benefits division Pluxy in early 2024. The proposed full spin-off will be put to a shareholder vote during a dedicated general meeting to be held early next year, the group said in its full-year earnings statement. According to Reuters, Japanese government bond yields climbed to fresh decade highs on Thursday, following a rise in U.S. Treasury yields overnight, as investors weighed the possibility of the Bank of Japan tweaking policy at next week's monetary policy meeting. The benchmark 10-year JGB yield rose as high as 0.885% before ticking down to 0.88%, hitting its highest since July 2013. According to Reuters, French IT company Autos on Thursday reported lower third-quarter revenue as good performance at its Eviden division was offset by the loss-making Tech Foundations unit. Autos posted quarterly revenue of €2.59 billion Euros for the whole group, down 3% organically and 5.3% on a constant currency basis from 2.82 billion euros last year. According to Reuters, European chipmaker ST Microelectronics beat expectations on Thursday for third quarter sales, helped by demand from the automotive sector. However, the company, whose clients include Tesla and Apple, said it expects a drop in sales in the fourth quarter. According to Reuters, U.S. penalties on shippers transporting Russian oil in breach of the G7's price cap could push more Russian cargoes onto vessels referred to as the Ghost Fleet and away from mainstream tankers, shipping sources and analysts told Reuters. The cap bans Western companies from providing maritime services for Russian seaborne oil exports sold above $60 a barrel. According to Reuters, Streaming became the largest source of income for composers and songwriters in 2022 and helped boost their collections by more than a quarter to 10.83 billion euros, a report showed on Thursday. Digital royalty collections surged nearly 34% to 4.2 billion euros in 2022 as more consumers turned to music and video subscription services, the International Confederation of Societies of Authors and Composers said in the report. According to Reuters, Food ingredients giant Kerry expects full-year earnings growth to be at low end of its previously stated range following a sharp third-quarter decline in volumes and pricing in its small dairy business, the company said on Thursday. The Irish group, which supplies ingredients to the likes of McDonald's, also said pricing in its much larger taste and nutrition unit began to fall, with a third-quarter decline of 1.4% reflecting some input cost deflation. According to Reuters, Israel's war with Palestinian militant group Hamas has upended expectations of where Israeli short-term interest rates are headed as policymakers try to balance a sliding shekel and slowing economy with already above-target inflation. Less than three weeks ago markets and analysts were predicting at least one more rate hike by early 2024, possibly as soon as this week, after an aggressive run of tightening that took the benchmark interest rate from 0.1% in April 2022 to 4.75% in May 2023. According to Reuters, Unilever met market expectations for third-quarter sales growth after raising prices at a slower rate but still failing to win back some shoppers who traded down to cheaper products during a cost-of-living crisis. The company also named Fernando Fernandez, currently president of the beauty and well-being business, as its new chief financial officer. According to Reuters, the European Central Bank will keep interest rates unchanged at a record high on Thursday snapping a 15-month streak of hikes, but may discuss a quicker reduction of its oversized portfolio of government debt as it battles still excessive inflation. The ECB has lifted rates at each of its past 10 meetings to combat runaway price growth but signaled a pause last month as the fastest pace of policy tightening is finally starting to have an impact. According to Bloomberg, Unilever PLC ruled out any major acquisitions as new chief executive officer Hein Schumacher set out a strategy that includes overhauling management and focusing on its biggest brands. Unilever's third quarter sales rose 5.2%, just missing expectations, as price rises for products like Hellman's mayonnaise and Sure deodorant eased. Volumes were dragged down by ice cream. According to Bloomberg, BNP Paribas posted weaker revenue from fixed income trading in the third quarter, adding to evidence that European banks underperformed their Wall Street counterparts in a period of lesser turbulence in markets. The Paris-based lender saw revenue from bond trading slide 12% to just over 1 billion euros.
overall revenue at the markets unit fell 9% to 1.8 billion euros in the three months through September, slightly below analyst estimates in a Bloomberg survey. That compares to an increase of 1.3% across Wall Street's main banks. Net income declined 4% to 2.7 billion euros. According to Reuters, Japanese authorities are facing renewed pressure to combat a sustained depreciation in the yen, as investors eye prospects of higher for longer U.S. interest rates while the Bank of Japan remains wedded to its super low interest rate policy. The Japanese yen hit a fresh one-year low of 150.50 per dollar, and was not far off the three-decade low of 151.94 it touched in October last year that led to Japanese authorities intervening in the currency market. According to Reuters, Russia's number two bank VTB on Thursday reported third-quarter net profit of 86.1 billion rubles, an increase on the previous, sanctions-hit year, but a lower return than the first two quarters of 2023. VTB, heavily exposed to international markets and with more than 20% of its loan portfolio in foreign currencies, was particularly hard hit in the early stages of the conflict in Ukraine, as Western sanctions targeted Russia's financial sector. According to Bloomberg, droughts and forest fires are among threats that may scupper Australia's ambitions to bolster its farming sector into a 100 billion Australian dollars powerhouse by the end of the decade. The country just recorded its driest ever September, which is jeopardizing the wheat harvest and forcing farmers to sell cattle. This summer's bushfire season promises to be worse than usual due to the El Nino weather pattern, while new pests, like the bee-killing Varroa mite, are another hurdle. According to Bloomberg, Goldman Sachs Group Inc. expects more interest rate hikes in the Philippines and Indonesia by year-end, revising its forecast for an extended pause in the two Southeast Asian countries. Resurgent currency and inflationary pressures could force the Banco Central ng Pilipinas and Bank Indonesia to take their policy rates higher in their November meetings, or even earlier in the Philippines' case if it makes an off-cycle move, Goldman economists wrote in a Wednesday note. The BSP announced a briefing at 3 p.m. local time on Thursday, without saying what the topic is. According to Reuters, the restaurant group said on Thursday it had received a request for information from Pizza Express Group owner Wheel Topco Limited to evaluate a possible offer, weeks after it agreed to be taken private by Apollo Global. According to Reuters, the United States does not have the right to get involved in problems between China and the Philippines, the Chinese Foreign Ministry said on Thursday at a regular press briefing. The U.S. is not party to the South China Sea issue, it has no right to get involved in a problem between China and the Philippines, said ministry spokesperson Mao Ning in addressing a question on the U.S. saying it will defend the Philippines. According to Bloomberg, the Philippine Central Bank resumed tightening monetary policy as it lifted its benchmark interest rate by 25 basis points in an off-cycle decision. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas will increase its target rate to 6.5% effective Friday, Governor Eli Remolona said in a briefing Thursday, announcing the decision made ahead of the scheduled November 16 monetary policy meeting. The move will bring the BSP's total rate increases to 450 basis points since May 2022 when it started its most aggressive tightening campaign in two decades. According to Bloomberg, the yen slumped back past 150 per dollar again, raising the risk of government intervention in the currency market and piling pressure on the Bank of Japan to adjust monetary policy. With another route in U.S. debt amplifying the yield gap to Japan, the currency on Thursday was trading well within the zone that saw authorities wade into the market last year. The weakness has also been noted by BOJ policymakers, who next week must decide whether to tweak policy that has weighed on the yen for years. According to Bloomberg, European stocks dropped on Thursday, bringing the benchmark stock 600 close to wiping out its 2023 gains, as glum company results in Europe and the US hit risk appetite before the European Central Bank's rate decision. The stock 600 was down 1% at 8.10 a.m. in London. The benchmark is now just 1.28% away from erasing its year-to-date advance. Automakers and banks declined the most, while the utilities and energy sectors outperformed. According to Bloomberg, private equity firm Partners Group Holding AG has shown initial interest in Hamilton Island as the family owners of the holiday destination in Australia conduct a strategic review for the asset, according to people familiar with the matter. 
The buyout firm is studying the resort island for a potential bid, said the people, who asked not to be identified as the information is private. Partners Group and the Oatley family, who own Hamilton Island, have held preliminary discussions, the people said. According to Reuters, Malaysia's communications regulator will issue a warning to social media firms TikTok and Meta for allegedly blocking pro-Palestinian content on their platforms, its communications minister said on Thursday. If this issue is ignored, I will not hesitate to take a very firm approach and stance, Fami Fadzel said in a posting on X, formerly known as Twitter. According to Reuters, the Russian ruble weakened marginally on Thursday, still supported by high oil prices and increasing foreign currency sales by exporters, but pulling back from a more than six-week high to the dollar on the eve of an expected interest rate hike. Analysts polled by Reuters expect the Bank of Russia to raise its benchmark rate by 100 basis points to 14% on Friday and give another hawkish signal to the market, as it tries rain in accelerating inflation exacerbated by the ruble's weakness. According to Bloomberg, SK Hynix Inc. reported a more moderate decline in revenue for the third quarter and said it will increase capital spending, a sign the global semiconductor market may be recovering after more than a year of challenges. Revenue dropped 17% to 9.07 trillion won, compared with expectations for 8.14 trillion won, according to analyst estimates compiled by Bloomberg. That's an improvement from a 47% slide in the previous three months and a drop of more than 58% the quarter before that. According to Reuters, Zambia's finance ministry said on Thursday it had reached an agreement in principle on debt restructuring terms with a creditor group holding its international bonds, a milestone in its drawn-out debt rework process. The agreement will see the three existing bonds restructured into two new amortizing bonds maturing in 2035 and 2053 respectively, with the 2035 note will pay out more interest sooner if Zambia's economy performs better. The deal would translate into an 18% nominal haircut, the ministry said. According to Reuters, a rough year for Vietnam's real estate sector has seen developers miss interest payments on debt, amid a credit crunch spurred by ill-timed government measures, although spillover risk has been limited. The sector was the worst performer last month on the falling Ho Chi Minh City Stock Exchange, with a drop of nearly 16% on the month, says key Vietnam investor Dragon Capital. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields were heading back towards 5% on Wednesday, dragging shares around the world to multi-month lows in the middle of a busy week for corporate earnings, with an ECB meeting and the release of U.S. GDP to come later in the day. A rebound in U.S. home sales and an auction of five-year notes that showed weak demand were the latest trigger for concern in the bond market, which saw the U.S. 10-year Treasury yield rise 11 basis points on Tuesday. According to Bloomberg, South Korean companies are rushing to buy more graphite from China before export controls on electric vehicle battery ingredient take effect in December. LG Energy Solution Limited said on an earnings call on Wednesday that it will try and buy more graphite as soon as possible prior to the measures kicking in. POSCO Future M Company, a battery electrode maker, is also making efforts to maintain the proper levels of stockpiles before the December 1 deadline, it said in an emailed response to questions. According to Reuters, the Kremlin said on Thursday it did not expect the election of Mike Johnson as Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives to influence events in Ukraine. The House of Representatives elected Johnson, a conservative Republican, as Speaker on Wednesday. Like many other Republicans closely allied to former President Donald Trump, Johnson has been an opponent of sending more aid to Ukraine. According to Reuters, EU leaders are poised to call for humanitarian corridors in Gaza and for pauses in bombardments into and out of the enclave to enable access for aid, after days of wrangling that highlighted divisions within the bloc over the Israel-Hamas conflict. According to Bloomberg, Bitcoin has jumped on bets that the first U.S. exchange-traded funds investing directly in the token are set to be approved. The question now is whether an actual green light for the products would spur some profit-taking. The largest digital asset is up 16% this week and at one point topped $35,000 for the first time since 2022. In contrast, global stocks are wilting under elevated treasury yields and deepening geopolitical gloom. According to Reuters, 
worries about U.S. interest rates remaining higher for longer sparked a sell-off across most emerging markets on Thursday, sending stocks to a fresh 11-month low, while investors awaited Turkey's interest rate decision. Mischi's index tracking M stocks dropped 1.2% as yield on U.S. 10-year tenors, a mark for interest rate expectations, edged up by 0909 G M T. According to Yahoo Finance, big tech earnings aren't providing a clear story at a time when the stock market needs one. A look at Microsoft's results tell an investor that business-to-business -business spending might be picking back up and declines in cloud spending have bottomed. A peek at Google's release tell that investor the opposite. According to Reuters, packaged goods makers including Unilever and Nestle disappointed investors with weak third-quarter sales volumes, but that could change in the coming months as price increases moderate. Companies have hiked prices since the COVID-19 pandemic to make up for higher costs, prompting some shoppers to look for better deals. The slide in sales volumes of big brands only grew worse after the Ukraine war sparked a cost-of-living crisis. According to Reuters, the Kremlin said on Thursday that efforts to agree on what it called a balanced UN resolution on the Israel-Hamas conflict should continue, but said it was wrong for any such resolution to only condemn one side. It was commenting a day after Russia and China vetoed a U.S. push for the U.N. Security Council to call for pauses in fighting to allow humanitarian aid access, the protection of civilians and a halt to arming Hamas and other militants in the Gaza Strip. According to Reuters, Russia said on Thursday that it planned to build close ties with North Korea in all areas, a day after South Korea, Japan and the United States condemned what they said were weapons supplies from Pyongyang to Moscow. According to Reuters, Mexican cement maker Cemex on Thursday reported a 75% slump in third-quarter profit, on a nearly five-fold rise in taxes and as hefty asset sales last year hurt the year-on-year -year earnings comparison. Cemex's net profit fell to $126 million, down from $494 million last year, the company said in a filing. According to Reuters, Workers for Chile's Codelco will not rule out a strike if the state-owned copper company enacts job cuts to counteract a slump in production, which has reached its lowest point in a quarter century, the head of the company's union association said. In an interview with Reuters, Amador Pontoya, president of the Federation of Copper Workers, which brings together the company's unions, said Codelco, the world's largest copper producer, should focus on getting structural projects, which have faced numerous delays, into production. According to Reuters, Sam Bankman Fried was due to take the stand on Thursday and become the latest senior business executive to testify at their own white collar criminal trial in the U.S. in recent years. Here are five criminal cases where the defendant testified. According to Reuters, Sam Bankman Fried could take the stand at his fraud trial as soon as Thursday, when prosecutors are set to finish presenting their case accusing the founder of now bankrupt cryptocurrency exchange FTX of stealing billions of dollars from customers. Defense lawyer Mark Cohen said in a court hearing on Wednesday that Bankman Fried would testify in his own defense, a risky move that will give prosecutors the chance to cross examine the 31 year old former billionaire about testimony from former close colleagues that he directed them to commit crimes. According to Reuters, Lind, the world's largest industrial gases company, raised its full-year earnings guidance on Thursday for a third time this year, driven by its manufacturing and food and beverage units. The U.S. German company, which supplies gases such as oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen to factories and hospitals, expects its adjusted earnings per share to grow by 14 to 15 percent, up from a previous guidance of 12 to 14 percent. According to Reuters, a Moscow court has upheld a claim by Rossbank to recover damages worth 94.47 million Hong Kong dollars from U.S. lender Citi and its affiliate in Hong Kong, Russian court documents showed on Thursday. Citi, which had the largest presence in Russia among U.S. banks, said it would exit the retail business in the country as part of a retreat from some overseas markets before Russia dispatched troops to Ukraine in February 2022. According to Reuters, as FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried prepares to take the stand at his trial on charges of taking billions in customer funds, he is likely to be asked about online posts assuring users the cryptocurrency exchange was safe. Here are some of the posts that appeared on the messaging platform X, formerly known as Twitter, 
that Bankman Fried will likely be asked about. According to Bloomberg, Stellantis NV says its $1.1 billion deal for a stake in a Chinese electric vehicle maker will help it offer more affordable EVs and gain an edge on rivals bracing for an onslaught of cheaper exports from the country. The Chinese offensive is visible everywhere, Chief Executive Officer Carlos Taveras told reporters on a call Thursday. Through the deal with Zhejiang Leap Motor Technologies Limited, we can be benefiting from this Chinese offensive rather than being a victim. According to Reuters, U.S. defense company Northrop Grumman on Thursday raised its annual revenue target for the second time this year after reporting a jump in third-quarter revenue and profit helped by strong weapons demand. The tense geopolitical landscape has created a strong global appetite for U.S. weaponry, with nations actively engaged in negotiations and striking deals to acquire arms and looking to speed up ongoing contracts. Increased defense spending by the U.S. and its allies benefited Northrop's top line. According to Reuters, financial sanctions on Russia continued to swell the balance sheet of Euroclear in the third quarter to more than 70% of net profit for the year to date at the Securities Settlement House. The European Union and other Western powers have imposed sanctions on Russia for its invasion of Ukraine. According to Reuters, Southwest Airlines reported a third quarter profit on Thursday that fell about 30% on soaring labor and fuel costs and the budget carrier said it expects higher aircraft deliveries from Boeing in 2023. Earnings at U.S. airlines have been pressured due to a surge in jet fuel prices during the July to September quarter, primarily driven by tighter supplies of crude oil. According to Reuters, Slovakia's newly appointed Prime Minister Robert Fico will not back further military aid for Ukraine nor support further sanctions against Russia at his first European Union summit, Slovak media cited him as saying on Thursday. Slovakia's government office did not immediately reply to a request for comment. According to Reuters, Merck County on Thursday reported higher than expected third quarter sales and profit on surprisingly strong demand for its COVID 19 treatment, primarily in Japan. The company posted sales of $15.96 billion in the quarter, up from $14.96 billion a year earlier. Analysts, on average, had expected sales of around $15.3 billion, according to LSEG data. According to Reuters, Sterling sank to a three-week low on Thursday after a slew of economic market data this week affirmed the view that the Bank of England will likely hold rates steady at its policy meeting next week. Sterling is heading for a third consecutive day of declines, down 0.2% to $1.2090, after briefly hitting its lowest since October 4. According to Reuters, Mobileye Global lowered the upper end of its annual revenue forecast on Thursday, in a sign that slowing electric vehicle production is likely to weigh on demand for its driver assistance technology. Automakers such as Tesla, General Motors and Ford have turned cautious about expanding their EV production capacity amid risks of a slowdown in demand due to higher borrowing costs and growing economic uncertainties. According to Reuters, Hypnosis Songs Fund said on Thursday that shareholders voted against the sale of some music catalogs and the continuation of the group as an investment trust, and as a result its September deal to sell 29 catalogs will not go through. The group had proposed to sell the catalogs to a partnership between its investment advisor and funds advised by Blackstone. According to Reuters, futures for Canada's main stock index fell on Thursday, tracking a sell-off in global markets, as the U.S. 10-year Treasury yield inched closer to crucial 5% again, while investors remained jittery as Israel continued its bombardment of the Gaza Strip. December futures on the SPTSX index were down 0.3% at 6.33 a.m. Eastern Time. According to Reuters, Tunisian police arrested Wadi al-Jari, the president of the Tunisian Football Federation, over suspicion of financial corruption, officials said on Thursday. Al-Jari will appear today before the investigating judge, a judicial source said. According to Reuters, PGE Corp. on Thursday reported a fall in third-quarter profit, primarily driven by higher wildfire-related costs. The utility has been linked to major wildfires and has faced several fines, including a $150 million settlement for the 2020 Zog fire. According to Reuters, 
Drugmaker Bristol Myers Squibb on Thursday pushed back by a year the time frame for its current new product portfolio to hit $10 billion in sales as the ramp up of new drugs including anemia treatment reblazil, psoriasis drug Sotic 2, and multiple sclerosis drug Zaposia takes longer than expected. The company said it now expects greater than $10 billion of new product sales in 2026. It had previously forecast $10 billion to $13 billion of sales for the portfolio in 2025. According to Reuters, as Europe turns to renewable sources to diversify energy supplies away from Russian oil and gas, a peaceful marine scene conceals a billion-dollar security headache. Rising above the Baltic Sea less than 10 kilometers off the coast of Denmark, 161 wind turbines spin slowly. They supply around 4% of the country's power, sent to shore through two cable connections. According to Reuters, Comcast on Thursday posted quarterly revenue that topped Wall Street estimates, bolstered by strong performance in streaming and theme parks, but also reported a surprise loss in broadband customers. Revenue for the media giant's third quarter rose 0.9% to $30.12 billion, beating analysts' estimates of $29.68 billion, according to LSEG data. According to Reuters, Pfizer and German partner BioNTech said on Thursday that their vaccine to prevent flu and COVID-19 generated a strong immune response against strains of the viruses in an early to mid-stage trial. The companies said they plan to start a late-stage trial in the coming months. According to Reuters, Harley-Davidson Inc. on Thursday reported a 24% fall in third-quarter profit as customers cut back on discretionary spending due to higher borrowing costs and inflationary pressures. Customers have turned more selective in buying big-ticket leisure items as interest rates have climbed over the past year from the U.S. Federal Reserve's aggressive monetary tightening while higher inflation is forcing them to focus on essentials. According to Yahoo Finance, Nasdaq futures fell on Thursday, promising a further slide into correction territory, as stocks continued to sink under the weight of disappointing big-tech earnings reports and rising bond yields. Contracts on the Nasdaq 100 dropped almost 0.9%, signaling tech stocks are still under pressure after booking their worst single-day performance in eight months on Wednesday. According to Reuters, German technology groups have warned they are being hit by delays in getting China-bound exports through customs, following the introduction of a German government strategy to reduce economic dependence on demand from China. German chip-making kit supplier Zeus Microtech late on Wednesday cut its sales forecasts for the second time in three months, blaming tightened controls for exports to China. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields were heading back towards 5% on Thursday, dragging shares around the world to multi-month lows in the middle of a busy week for corporate earnings, with an ECB meeting and the release of U.S. GDP to come later in the day. A rebound in U.S. home sales and an auction of five-year notes that showed weak demand were the latest trigger for concern in the bond market, which saw the U.S. 10-year Treasury yield rise 11 basis points on Wednesday. According to Reuters, U.S. electric and gas utility CMS Energy posted about a 7% rise in third-quarter profit on Thursday, helped by lower operating expenses. Operating expenses of the Jackson Michigan-based company fell about 21% to $1.40 billion in the three months ended September 30. According to Reuters, an inquiry opened on Thursday tasked with determining responsibility for a fire in Johannesburg that killed 77 people, throwing a spotlight on gangs that seize abandoned buildings in the city's center and illegally rent them out. One of the worst disasters in living memory in South Africa's economic hub, the blaze broke out on August 31 in a dilapidated building crammed with mostly foreign migrants. Many of the victims were burned beyond recognition. According to Reuters, ConocoPhillips is considering an offer for Crown Rock LP, an energy producer in the West Texas area of the Permian Basin, people familiar with the matter said, as consolidation in the sector picks up pace. Houston-based Conoco, the largest U.S. oil and gas producer after Exxon Mobil Corp and Chevron Corp, has expressed interest in participating in the sale process for privately held Crown Rock, which is valued between $10 billion and $15 billion, the sources said. According to Bloomberg, Sinopec posted better-than-expected profit in the third quarter despite China's stuttering economic recovery, 
backed by higher oil product sales and lower losses in its chemicals business. China Petroleum Chemical Corp. As the company is known, said net income jumped 38% to 17.94 billion yuan in the third quarter from a year earlier, according to an exchange filing on Thursday. Revenue rose 4.2% to 876.3 billion yuan. According to Reuters, Albemarle, the world's largest lithium producer, on Thursday named Neil Shiori as its new chief financial officer, replacing Scott Tozier. Tozier will transition to the role of strategic advisor to the CEO and Shiori's appointment will be effective November 6, the company said. According to Reuters, Newmont Corp. on Thursday fell short of Wall Street estimates for third-quarter profit, as the world's largest gold miner struggled with weak production. Denver, Colorado-based Newmont's quarterly attributable gold production fell 13% to 1.29 million ounces from 1.49 million ounces a year earlier, largely due to lower production at the Penasquito mine in Mexico, as well as Akiam and Ahafo mines in Ghana. According to Bloomberg, Harley-Davidson Inc.'s third-quarter profit missed estimates and sales plunged amid elevated borrowing costs in the U.S. and economic weakness around the globe. The Milwaukee-based company on Thursday reported earnings of $1.38 a share, missing the $1.40 average of analysts' estimates compiled by Bloomberg. Revenue from motorcycles and related products fell 9% from a year ago to $1.3 billion, below expectations. According to Reuters, some of Europe's top companies, including Volkswagen and Unilever warned on Thursday that business in the region is increasingly tough, underscoring concerns that the full impact of high inflation and borrowing is now being felt by consumers. Unilever delivered third-quarter sales which met market expectations after the maker of Dove Soap and Ben Jerry's ice cream raised prices albeit at a slower rate. According to Reuters, Tobacco giant Altria Group cut its annual profit forecast on Thursday as smokers increasingly swapped out its more expensive cigarettes for cheaper brands or smoking alternatives. The Marlboro maker has been hiking prices of its traditional products to offset volume declines as many consumers, wary of health risks, opt for new options like vapes or oral nicotine. According to Reuters, Indonesia's bid to add value to its mineral exports will dilute copper miner Freeport's benchmark status for annual contracts as its 2024 sales will fall short of levels needed for a global reference, three sources with direct knowledge of the matter said. As one of the world's largest copper miners, producing 2 million metric tons annually, treatment and refining charges Freeport agrees with Chinese smelters has for years been used as a basis for contracts worldwide. According to Reuters, Laboratory Corporation of America topped Wall Street expectations for quarterly adjusted profit on Thursday, as strength in its routine diagnostics business more than offset weak COVID test sales. U.S. lab testing companies including LabCorp rival Quest Diagnostics have seen a rebound in routine test volumes with people returning for regular health checkups that have been deferred during the pandemic. According to Reuters, Brazil's annual inflation came in broadly in line with market expectations in its early October reading, resuming a downward trend as economists now forecast the key consumer price index to end this year within the central bank's target. The IPCA 15 index hit 5.05% in the year to mid-October, data from statistics agency IBGE showed on Thursday, down from the 5.19% seen at the end of September and in line with the 5.04% forecast by analysts polled by Reuters. According to Reuters, privately held U.S. fine jewelry and luxury watch marketplaces Worthy and Circa Jewels told Reuters on Thursday they will merge to create a company worth more than $100 million. The deal comes as a high inflation rate and slowing economy has sent many consumers with tight budgets into the arms of secondhand retailers, such as The Real Real, Poshmark and ThreadUp. According to Reuters, Belgium said on Thursday that it had arrested a 45-year-old Tunisian man in connection with the gun attack earlier this month by another Tunisian who had pledged allegiance to Islamic State and shot dead two Swedes. The Brussels federal prosecutor said a Tunisian identified as Lamjid K was arrested this week over the October 16 attack and was charged with murder and attempted murder in a terrorist context and participation in the activities of a terrorist organization. According to Reuters, Kimco Realty a commercial real estate investment trust, topped market expectations for third-quarter revenue on Thursday, 
helped by higher rental rates and steady demand at its grocery-anchored shopping centers. Kimco has benefited from the dwindling availability of rental spaces, which has allowed landlords to bump up rental rates. According to Reuters, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida used his visit to Tokyo's auto show on Thursday to call for the private sector's help in ensuring the economy makes a total break with its deflationary past. Kishida met with Toyota chairman Akio Toyota and other industry executives at the Japan Mobility Show, which officially opened on Thursday after a four-year hiatus. According to Reuters, the risk premium on Italian government debt fell slightly on Thursday after the European Central Bank kept interest rates on hold and said it would keep reinvesting the proceeds from its pandemic-era bond purchases until the end of next year. The spread between Italian and German 10-year bond yields fell to 200 bits per second, having traded at around 202 bits per second before the decision. According to Yahoo Finance, FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried has decided to testify in his own defense, a legal gamble that sets up a dramatic conclusion to his criminal trial in New York City. The 31-year-old, who pleaded not guilty to seven counts of fraud and money laundering, has sat silently for the last three weeks while prosecutors argued that he stole billions of customer deposits from FTX, his cryptocurrency exchange. According to Reuters, the European Central Bank broke the longest streak of interest rate hikes in its 25-year history on Thursday, saying the latest data continued to point to inflation slowly coming down to its 2% target. The central bank for the 20 countries that use the euro left the rate it pays on deposits at a record high 4.0%, reaffirming that the current level of borrowing costs may just be enough to tame inflation if kept there, sufficiently long. According to Bloomberg, Meta Platforms Inc. dashed investors' hopes for a long-term advertising recovery, saying it was at the whim of an uncertain economic environment, even as the company plans to spend heavily on newer businesses including virtual reality and artificial intelligence. Shares fell in extended trading. We are very subject to volatility in the macro landscape, Chief Financial Officer Susan Lee said on a call with investors. The revenue outlook is uncertain for 2024. According to Reuters, investors will look for signs that U.S. fast food chains, already contending with inflation stung consumers preferring to dine at home, will also have to grapple with the explosive popularity of weight loss drugs. Chipotle Mexican Grill will kick off the earnings season on Thursday and its commentary will be scrutinized by investors worried that appetite-suppressing drugs like Ozempic and Wegovy will spark a fundamental change in food consumption patterns and hurt demand for burgers and fried chicken. According to Bloomberg, the European Central Bank left interest rates unchanged for the first time in more than a year as it gauges whether an unprecedented series of hikes will succeed in subduing inflation. Following last month's knife-edge decision to lift the deposit rate to a record 4%, policymakers kept it there on Thursday, matching the predictions of all economists surveyed by Bloomberg. According to Yahoo Finance, Ford and the United Auto Workers announced a tentative labor deal is in place, potentially ending a bruising six-week-long contract negotiation. The UAW said the tentative agreement includes a 25% base wage increases through April 2028 and will cumulatively raise the top wage by over 30% to more than $40 an hour, and raise the starting wage by 68%, to over $28 an hour. The lowest paid workers at Ford will see a raise of more than 150% over the life of the agreement with some workers receiving an 85% increase immediately upon ratification. According to Reuters, despite a stronger-than-expected reading for third-quarter U.S. economic growth, traders on Thursday added to bets the Federal Reserve will keep policy on hold through this year and will begin interest rate cuts in mid-2024. Futures that settle to the Fed's policy rate in December showed traders now see about a 25% chance the Fed will raise its benchmark short-term interest rate by a quarter of a percent at its last meeting of the year, to a range of 5.5% to 5.75%. According to Reuters, Ford autoworkers were set to head back to work after the United Auto Workers Union reached a tentative labor deal with the company late Wednesday. Ford was the first of Detroit's big three car manufacturers to negotiate a settlement to strikes joined by 45,000 workers since mid-September. The UAW will now turn its attention to talks with General Motors and Chrysler parent Stellantis.
According to Reuters, the U.S. economy grew at its fastest pace in nearly two years in the third quarter as higher wages from a tight labor market helped to power consumer spending, again defying dire warnings of a recession that have lingered since 2022. According to Yahoo Finance, Sony is going into the 2023 holiday season with something it hasn't had in three years, a steady supply of its PlayStation 5 consoles. Yes, for the first time since the video game giant launched its PS5 in the fall of 2020, units will be readily available for consumers to grab off of store shelves or buy online. We had supply challenges just like every other consumer product out there that uses the same chips that we use, and we couldn't get a PlayStation 5 to everybody that wanted one, Eric Lempel, SVP of Global Marketing, Sales, and Business Operations for Sony Interactive Entertainment told Yahoo Finance. But this is the first full year where we can do that. According to Reuters, BP's electric vehicle charger unit is ordering $100 million worth of Tesla ultra-fast chargers for rollout in the United States, the first deployment of Tesla's chargers on an independent network, the companies said on Thursday. The purchase is part of BP Pulse's plans to invest up to $1 billion in charging stations across the U.S. by 2030 and it offers EV market leader Tesla a new revenue stream. According to Bloomberg, Hurricane Otis left a trail of destruction in Acapulco after tearing into the historic Mexican beach town with wind speeds of 165 miles per hour, smashing shops and wrecking apartment buildings and hotels. In addition to the human toll, which could be high, Acapulco likely suffered an economic impact of $10 billion to $15 billion, according to Chuck Watson, a disaster modeler with Enki Research. There will be added losses because the region's high season for tourism is December to March. According to Reuters, euro area borrowing costs edged lower, and yield spreads between core and peripheral government bonds tightened after the European Central Bank left rates unchanged and confirmed that flexible reinvestments of part of its vast bond portfolio would continue until 2024. The ECB snapped an unprecedented streak of 10 consecutive rate hikes and maintained its guidance, which signals steady policy ahead. According to Reuters, ExxonMobil's $59.5 billion deal to acquire oil and gas producer Pioneer Natural Resources may have been larger than Chevron's $53 billion agreement to buy Hess, but it is Chevron that is paying a loftier price tag. Pioneer generates twice as much annual cash as Hess, but the all-stock transactions value Pioneer at just 6.35 times its 12-month cash flow compared with 11.65 times for Hess. According to Reuters, Mexico is looking to reduce an airport usage fee by 8% to 12%, a top official told Reuters late on Wednesday, providing clarity into the government's plans following airport groups' complaints of unilateral changes being made to their operations. Mexico is aiming to reduce the airport usage fee, also known as the TUA, but it's still up for negotiation, Deputy Transportation Minister Rogelio Jimenez Pons said. According to Reuters, World Trade Organization members have begun reviewing reform proposals designed to address U.S. concerns in what a key negotiator called the last chance to restore the trade watchdog's ability to settle trade disputes. The draft proposals seen by Reuters represent what WTO delegates say is the most serious attempt so far to fix the broken dispute settlement system. It envisages such reforms as time limits on resolving disputes and a new way to allow countries to give feedback on rulings they disagree with. According to Reuters, Masco posted a better-than-expected quarterly profit and raised its full-year earnings forecast on Thursday as the home-building products manufacturer benefits from higher prices and easing raw material expenses. The costs of some commodities cooled from last year's highs, while freight costs also tempered in the quarter. That, along with Masco raising its prices, has helped it bolster its margins and weather a drop in sales. According to Reuters, Industrial parts provider W.W. Granger beat analysts' expectations for third-quarter profit on Wednesday as demand from its U.S. industrial clients for maintenance and repair equipment remained resilient. The company sells safety, maintenance and repair equipment to North American and Japanese industrial clients and domestic consumers. According to Reuters, Goldman Sachs Asset Management has launched a pair of defined outcome exchange-traded funds, a group of products that use option strategies to offer upside exposure to stocks while cushioning downside risk. The new funds, 
The Goldman Sachs SP500 Core Premium Income and the Goldman Sachs NASDAQ 100 Core Premium Income ETF will use an options overlay strategy to limit downside risk and generate income, said Michael Cranieri, global head of ETFs at GSAM. According to Reuters, what comes after the pause? On October 26, the European Central Bank snapped a 15-month streak of rate hikes by keeping borrowing costs on hold at a record high, echoing the recent actions of the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England. The stage is now set for the world's major rate setters to telegraph how long it will take them to declare their battle against inflation over and to start cutting rates, following the most aggressive monetary tightening cycle in decades. According to Reuters, private equity firm HG is weighing options, including a sale, for its German software business F24 next year, three sources familiar with the matter told Reuters. F24's emergency notification software, which can be used by governments to alert citizens of a major incident, has seen rapid growth in recent months, and the company could be valued at up to 1 billion euros, two of the sources said. According to Yahoo Finance, a new generation is taking over the top jobs on Wall Street. When the 54-year-old Ted Pick becomes Morgan Stanley's new CEO on January 1, replacing the 65-year-old James Gorman, Four of the biggest banks in the U.S. will be run by people who were not in charge during the 2008 financial crisis, or its aftermath. According to Bloomberg, Amazon.com Inc.'s run as one of the best stocks this year will likely come down to the performance of a single business line, cloud computing. That's the lesson, at least, from the results delivered by Alphabet Inc. and Microsoft Corp. this week. The Windows software maker rode its Azure cloud services business to a 3.1% gain on Wednesday, while Google's parent suffered its biggest stock drop in more than three years after cloud sales marred otherwise strong results. Amazon sank 5.6% in a broad tech route ahead of its earnings due on Thursday afternoon. According to Reuters, the Bank of Canada may not have to raise its key overnight rate further if inflation cools in line with the central bank's expectations. Governor Tiff Macklem said in an interview with the Canadian Broadcasting Corp. The economy is not overheated anymore and we do think there's more inflation relief in the pipeline, and if that comes through, we won't have to raise rates further, Macklem said in a CBC radio interview aired on Thursday. According to Reuters, contracts to buy U.S. existing homes rose unexpectedly in September despite elevated mortgage rates that continue to create gridlock in the housing market according to a report published Thursday. The National Association of Realtors Pending Home Sales Index rose 1.1% to 72.6 from 71.8 in August, the largest increase since January. Economists polled by Reuters had expected a decline of 1.8%. According to Yahoo Finance, the fear that mortgage rates could rise further may have lit a fire under some homebuyers last month with pending home sales unexpectedly increasing from August. Home sales under contract gained 1.1% in September from the month before, according to the National Association of Realtors on Thursday, besting the 7.1% drop in August. The result was also far better than the 2% decline that Bloomberg economists had forecasted and follows a similar increase in new home sales last month. According to Bloomberg, the so-called Magnificent Seven technology companies that have powered this year's U.S. stock rally are posting disappointing earnings, wiping $200 billion off their market value and threatening to push the SP500 into a correction. Google owner Alphabet Inc., Tesla Inc. and Facebook parent Meta Platforms Inc. have all slumped since reporting, with Microsoft Corp. the only bright spot. Amazon.com Inc. publishes results after the close Thursday and the options market is implying a one-day move for the stock of 8.1% in either direction, putting about $100 billion in market value in play. According to Reuters, establishing a climate disclosure rule for the United States market would help U.S. companies avoid the confusion of trying to use foreign reporting frameworks, Gary Gensler, chair of the Securities and Exchange Commission, said on Thursday. Gensler told an event held by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce that he hoped an eventual rule, which was first proposed more than a year ago and received some 16,000 comments, would survive any legal challenges. According to Yahoo Finance, Amazon will report its third quarter earnings on Wednesday after the bell, with the company's cloud business in the crosshairs.
it's been a week of mixed cloud results. On Tuesday, Microsoft reported better than anticipated growth in its Azure cloud business, while Alphabet's cloud growth numbers disappointed. Amazon Web Services is up next, under pressure to show some numbers. According to Reuters, the European Commission said on Thursday that it had not launched formal investigations into efforts by Meta, TikTok and X to remove harmful content from their platforms, confirming it had so far sent them requests for information. There is no new development. The Commission sent formal requests for information to X, Meta and TikTok. These are not to be confused with a potential launch of proceedings, a Commission spokesperson told Reuters in an email. According to Reuters, a U.S. labor board on Thursday issued a final rule making it easier for workers and unions to hold companies liable for labor law violations by their franchisees and contractors, reviving an Obama-era standard heavily criticized by trade groups. The rule from the National Labor Relations Board will treat companies as so-called joint employers when they have control, even if it is indirect or not exercised, over essential terms and conditions of employment such as pay, scheduling, hiring and firing, and supervision. According to Reuters, oilfield and liquefied natural gas supplier Baker Hughes on Thursday raised its full-year revenue forecast, primarily on strong demand for its liquefied natural gas equipment. Baker Hughes in recent years has benefited from a boom in global demand for LNG in the race to build new export terminals in the post-COVID recovery of oilfield activity. According to Reuters, Canada stocks were trading flat on Thursday as gains in utilities offset the losses in energy stocks, while robust U.S. GDP data defied dire warnings of a recession that have lingered since 2022. According to Reuters, Goldman Sachs on Thursday launched an institute to offer its clients insights on geopolitics and technology, according to an internal memo seen by Reuters. The Goldman Sachs Global Institute will be led by Jared Cohen and George Lee, partners at the U.S. banking heavyweight, the memo said. According to Reuters, establishing rules for U.S. companies to follow when reporting their impacts on the environment would help them avoid the confusion of trying to use foreign frameworks, Gary Gensler, chair of the Securities and Exchange Commission, said on Thursday. Gensler told an event held by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce that he hoped an eventual rule on reporting carbon footprints, which was first proposed more than a year ago and received some 16,000 comments, would survive any legal challenges. According to Reuters, Western Digital Corp and Japan's Kioxia Holdings have broken off talks to create one of the world's biggest chipmakers, the Nikkei newspaper reported on Thursday. The companies were unable to agree on conditions with top Kioxia shareholder Bain Capital, the newspaper said, without saying where it got the information. According to Reuters, JP Morgan has reached out to Venezuela bondholders about normalizing the weighting of the country's international notes in its widely followed MB indexes, three sources with direct knowledge told Reuters. The talks come after the United States lifted sanctions on October 18 on trading certain bonds issued by the sovereign and state oil firm PDVSA in the secondary market. The restrictions were removed in response to a deal reached between the country's government and opposition parties for the 2024 election. According to Reuters, a New York judge said on Thursday that he would reconsider fining Donald Trump $10,000 for violating a gag order barring the former U.S. president from speaking publicly about court staff during his civil fraud trial. Justice Arthur Engeron fined Trump for the second time on Wednesday after he again appeared to violate the order by making an apparent reference to his top clerk in comments before news cameras outside the courtroom. According to Yahoo Finance, Comcast shares fell as much as 8% on Thursday, the biggest intraday decline since July 2022, after the company reported a surprise loss of broadband subscribers in the third quarter, despite reporting a beat on both the top and bottom lines. Total domestic broadband customers dropped 18,000 compared to the year-ago period to hit just under 32.3 million total subscribers. Wall Street was anticipating a gain of about 3,600. According to Reuters, Lind, the world's largest industrial gases company, said on Thursday it expects to maintain its strong growth track record after raising its annual earnings guidance for a third time this year, aided by a global push for a clean energy transition. The U.S.-German company has consistently beaten earnings estimates over the past two years, 
benefiting from growing hydrogen investments as countries look to cut back on emissions. According to Bloomberg, Siemens Energy AG is in talks with the German government about securing state guarantees as it struggles to shore up its troubled wind turbine unit. Shares plummeted 36%. The company is seeking roughly 16 billion euros in backstops over two years, according to people familiar with the matter. Deepening problems with certain onshore turbines are expected to push net losses and cash outflow beyond forecasts for the year, the manufacturer said. According to Reuters, shares around the world fell on Thursday as U.S. Treasury yields lingered near 5%, U.S. economic growth exceeded expectations, and companies posted mixed results. The U.S. economy grew at its fastest pace in nearly two years in the third quarter, data showed, as higher wages in a tight labor market helped power consumer spending, again defying dire warnings of a recession that have lingered since 2022. According to Reuters, French video game producer Ubisoft confirmed on Thursday its guidance for the current financial year, as the company expressed confidence in its lineup after it beat its net booking estimate for the second quarter. The maker of the blockbuster, Rainbow Six, franchise reported net bookings of 554.8 million euros for the three months until September 30, well above its target of 350 million euros. According to Bloomberg, Real Madrid FC is set to borrow about 370 million euros from institutional investors to help finance the renovation of its iconic Santiago Bernabeu Stadium, according to two people familiar with the matter. Europe's most successful football club is raising the money through a private debt issuance, which will be paid back with funds from ticket revenues in what is called a waterfall payment structure, said the people, who asked not to be identified as the discussions are private. According to Yahoo Finance, oil fell on Thursday as traders assessed the ongoing conflict the Middle East, and hotter-than-expected economic output in the U.S. suggested the Federal Reserve will stay on its path of higher for longer interest rates. Brent fell more than 1% to trade above $88 per barrel in midday trading. West Texas Intermediate also fell as much as 3% in the session, before pairing losses and trading above $84 per barrel. According to Reuters, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has 8 to 10 filings of possible exchange-traded products for Bitcoin in front of it for consideration, SEC Chair Gary Gensler said Thursday. Bitcoin has rallied this week on speculation that SEC approval is imminent for a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund, seen as a driver of demand because it would allow investors to obtain direct exposure to the cryptocurrency via an exchange listed product. According to Reuters, after Hamas shock attack on Israel, Shimrit Ben Arish, a mother from an Israeli settlement in the occupied West Bank, drove up to a shooting range in central Kfar Saba for gun license firearms training. According to Yahoo Finance, mortgage rates increased again last week, closing in on 8% and convincing many homebuyers to give up on the market for now. The average 30-year mortgage rate jumped to 7.79% from 7.63% the previous week, according to Freddie Mac on Thursday. The average borrowing rate has remained above 7% for 11 straight weeks and has risen 8 weeks in a row. According to Reuters, from supporting Ukraine to boosting military might and managing migration, European Union leaders channeled diverging priorities on Thursday as they started debating where to put more money from their shared budget in the next four years. The EU is due to decide in December on a revision of the bloc's 2021-27 budget worth 1.1 trillion euros, which is already strained by emergency spending during the COVID pandemic and since Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022. According to Reuters, U.S. waterborne imports of crude from OPEC plus members including Saudi Arabia have dropped steadily over the last year, further tightening supplies in the U.S. while supporting other markets including Europe, according to Flow's data and analysts. Going forward, the level of U.S. crude imports from OPEC and other exporters in U.S. shipments to Europe will probably have a more direct impact on global oil prices thanks to a change made earlier this year to the Brent crude benchmark. According to Yahoo Finance, does anybody know what the Republican Civil War is actually about? Why, exactly, did House Republicans oust their own leadership in early October? And why are they now a flock of headless chickens, squawking about everything and nothing? The principal explanations for the ongoing Republican self-immolation seem to be egomania, 
personal grievance, and ideological rigidity. The GOP has devolved into a confederation of warring tribes that never forget or forgive an offense and vow a retribution forever. According to Reuters, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Thursday announced the creation of a 39-member advisory body to address issues in the international governance of artificial intelligence. Members include tech company executives, government officials from Spain to Saudi Arabia, and academics from countries such as the US, Russia and Japan. According to Yahoo Finance, Ford is set to report third-quarter earnings after the bell, with investors keen to hear about the tentative deal reached with the United Auto Workers on a labor contract. The results also come as crosstown rival GM reported strong earnings, but pulled its guidance due to the labor stoppages. For the quarter, Ford is expected to report top-line revenue of $41.21 billion, which would be a nearly 11% improvement from a year ago, but a dip from the $45 billion reported in Q2. Ford is also expected to post adjusted EPS of $0.47, cents, an adjusted net income of $1.874 billion. According to Yahoo Finance, having health insurance doesn't guarantee being able to afford healthcare costs, according to a new report from the Commonwealth Fund. Among working-age American adults surveyed, 43% with employer coverage and 57% with marketplace or individual market plans said it was somewhat difficult or very difficult to afford their healthcare. Across all insurance types, 51% of those surveyed reported difficulty affording health care. According to Reuters, nearly half of investors who have not yet added exchange-traded funds to their portfolios say they're likely to change their minds, according to a Schwab Asset Management survey released on Thursday. According to Bloomberg, Israel's military said it made a limited ground raid into northern Gaza with infantry and tanks, before withdrawing as it kept up airstrikes on the besieged territory. A series of Israeli incursions have previously sought to gather intelligence on Hamas and hostages. U.S. President Joe Biden confirmed he's asked Israel to delay a full ground invasion to help secure the release of more people held by Hamas, which the U.S. and European Union designate a terrorist group. That came hours after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reiterated such an operation is being prepared. According to Reuters, what lies in wait for Israeli ground troops in Gaza, security sources say, is a Hamas tunnel network hundreds of kilometers long and up to 80 meters deep, described by one freed hostage as a spider's web, and by one expert as the Viet Cong times 10. The Palestinian Islamist group has different kinds of tunnels running beneath the sandy 360 SQKM coastal strip and its borders, including attack, smuggling, storage and operational burrows, Western and Middle East sources familiar with the matter said. According to Bloomberg, Panama's Supreme Court will consider a lawsuit which alleges that the nation's contract with copper miner First Quantum Minerals Limited violates the Constitution. The court said in a statement that it will issue an opinion on the lawsuit within 10 business days. If it then proceeds, it will request written arguments from attorneys representing both sides. From there, it would advance to the magistrates for a ruling, the court said. According to Bloomberg, Comcast Corp. slid the most in more than a year after reporting drops in broadband and cable subscribers, and predicting more losses to come. Cord cutting and increasing competition have eroded Comcast's traditional customer base. The company, which owns Xfinity, the NBC Universal Media Empire and Sky TV, lost 490,000 cable TV customers in the third quarter, better than analysts expected but part of an ongoing trend as consumers switch to streaming services like Netflix. According to Reuters, French tire maker Michelin said on Thursday it intends to wind down tire production at its Ardmore site in Oklahoma in 2025, which will result in the loss of 1,400 jobs. The decision to wind down tire making operations at Ardmore was made as the plant is not equipped to deliver tires at competitive costs. According to Reuters, U.S. defense contractor RTX Corp. and Israel's Rafael Advanced Defense Systems will build a missile manufacturing facility in East Camden, Arkansas, the company said on Thursday. The facility will produce Tamir missiles for the Iron Dome weapon system and its U.S. variant, Skyhunter. According to Reuters, 
Britain on Thursday cautioned the public about buying fake weight loss pens claiming to contain Novo Nordisk's diabetes drug Ozempic or weight loss drug Saxenda after reports of a very small number of hospitalizations. The warning from the country's medicines regulator comes days after several people were hospitalized in Austria after using suspected fake versions of Ozempic amid a Europe-wide hunt for imitations of the hugely popular drug. According to Reuters, Google executive Prabhakar Raghavan on Thursday detailed challenges the search and advertising giant faces from smaller rivals, describing efforts to avoid becoming the next road kill. Raghavan testified at the ongoing antitrust trial in the suit brought by the U.S. Justice Department and a coalition of state attorneys general, alleging Alphabet's Google unlawfully abused its dominance in the search engine market to maintain monopoly power. According to Reuters, an appraisal well drilled by a consortium led by ExxonMobil in Guyana has resulted in a significant discovery of oil and gas, the South American country's energy ministry said on Thursday. The Lancet Fish 2 well results mark the fourth offshore discovery in the country this year, and brings the total number of discoveries from 2015 to date to 46, for more than 11 billion barrels of recoverable oil and gas. According to Bloomberg, Whirlpool Corp. Shares tumbled after the Maytag owner trimmed its full-year profit outlook amid an uptick in promotions and softer discretionary purchases in North America, its biggest market. Adjusted earnings are now expected to be about $16 a share for the full year, Whirlpool said in its earnings statement Wednesday. That's below the average analyst estimate of $16.17, and it's the low end of the previously projected range of $16 to $18. According to Bloomberg, the route in U.S. stocks has brought the SP500 index to a crucial inflection point. It's teetering near a correction after breaching 4,200 for the first time since May, a key technical level that may point to a longer-term sell-off. If the selling continues and the benchmark gauge for American equities stays below that psychological threshold, there are few levels to lure dip buyers, according to technical analysts, who monitor daily averages and other metrics to determine stock market momentum. According to Reuters, about 250,000 barrels per day of Venezuelan crude currently going to Asia could be diverted to the U.S. Gulf Coast following last week's easing of U.S. energy sanctions on the OPEC country, Gary Simmons, chief operating officer of oil refiner Valero Energy, said on Thursday. Washington last week issued a six-month relaxation of sanctions on Venezuela's oil and gas sectors, in place since 2019, allowing the country to export to its chosen markets. According to Bloomberg, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said that the surge in longer-term bond yields in recent months is a reflection of a strong U.S. economy, not the jump in government borrowing driven by a widening fiscal deficit. I don't think much of that is connected to the U.S. budget deficit, Yellen said at an event in Bloomberg's Washington office Thursday. We're seeing yields go up in most advanced countries. According to Reuters, the Canadian government on Thursday released interim guidance on a key environmental law it is amending after the Supreme Court ruled the legislation was largely unconstitutional, adding some clarity after companies warned the uncertainty could deter investments. Canada's Supreme Court dealt a blow to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's government earlier this month by striking down most of the Impact Assessment Act, a federal law assessing how major projects such as coal mines and oil sands plants impact the environment. According to Reuters, the European Central Bank steered clear on Thursday of signaling any big policy shifts that could have unsettled investors that are already grappling with a raft of risks from war, oil prices and tighter credit conditions. The ECB paused an unprecedented hiking cycle in which its main rate has risen to a record 4%, from below 0% in July 2022, as inflation slows and the bloc's economy deteriorates. According to Bloomberg, Mount Bank Corp is the loan issuer tapping the investment-grade primary market Thursday, as new issues trail market expectations this week, extending an October slump. The bank is looking to sell a fixed to floating rate note according to a person with knowledge of the matter. The six-year security that's not callable for five years, may yield 2.8 percentage points above treasuries, said the person, who asked not to be identified as the details are private. According to Reuters, Cultural phenomenon Taylor Swift helped fuel revenue at Universal Music Group in the third quarter, the world's largest record label said on Thursday. With the release of Speak Now, 
Swift became the first woman to have four albums in the top ten charts at the same time, and the first artist since the Beatles to have songs from three separate albums simultaneously in the top ten. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. economy grew at the fastest pace in nearly two years last quarter on a burst of consumer spending, which will be tested in coming months. Gross domestic product accelerated to a 4.9% annualized rate, more than double the second quarter pace, according to the government's preliminary estimate Thursday. The economy's main growth engine, personal spending, jumped 4%, also the most since 2021. According to Bloomberg, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said that the U.S. relationship with China is in a more positive place now after a dangerous period when there were about two years of little contact between senior officials of the world's top two economies. In more or less over two years, almost no senior level contact had taken place during the pandemic between China and the United States, and I think that was a dangerous situation, Yellen said at an event in Bloomberg's Washington office Thursday. That's particularly true at times of disagreement, she said. According to Reuters, President Joe Biden delivered a direct message to Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei against targeting U.S. personnel in the region, the White House said on Thursday after American forces were attacked in Iraq and Syria. There was a direct message relayed, White House spokesman John Kirby said at a news briefing, declining to elaborate. According to Reuters, Berkshire Hathaway, the conglomerate run by billionaire Warren Buffett, bought Occidental Petroleum shares for the first time in nearly four months, adding to its oil bet following two recent mega-mergers in that industry. Berkshire said in a U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filing on Wednesday night it paid about $246 million for 3.9 million Occidental shares this week. According to Bloomberg, even by the standards of the space race, the idea seemed bold, maybe a bit crazy. In 1968, before the first human set foot on the moon, an engineer working on one of the Apollo mission's experiments proposed a new way to power the world. Giant orbiting solar power plants could soak up the constant sunshine in space, unhindered by clouds, night or seasons, and beam it back to Earth, Peter Glazer wrote in the journal Science. Only space-based solar and perhaps nuclear fusion held the potential to one day replace fossil fuels as civilization's main energy source, and fusion was so far off that Glazer dismissed it as the physicist's dream. According to Reuters, a U.S. appeals court on Thursday temporarily paused a federal judge's order last month that had required the Biden administration to expand a planned offshore oil and gas auction in the Gulf of Mexico by 6 million acres. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit stayed the September decision pending an appeal, according to a court document. According to Bloomberg, markets are coming around to the idea that the Bank of Canada will be forced to start cutting rates by late next year, shifting their bets a day after Governor Tiff Macklem and his officials downgraded the growth outlook. Overnight swap markets are pricing in nearly 225 basis point cuts by December 2024, according to data tracked by Bloomberg a change that follows policymakers' rate decision and monetary policy report on Wednesday. The central bank held its overnight rate at 5% while forecasting slow growth and a higher near-term level of inflation. According to Reuters, Mexican bottler Aca Continental said on Thursday its third-quarter net profit rose 7% as it sold more water and soft drinks than expected in its home market and widened its U.S. profit margin. The net profit of 4.54 billion Mexican pesos was slightly below the 4.62 billion pesos analysts polled by LSCG had estimated, but ACA's higher core margins exceeded JP Morgan's expectations. According to Reuters, the founder of the world's biggest chipmaker, Morris Chong, said on Thursday that increasing tensions over technology between the United States and China will slow down the global chip industry. Chong who founded Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co. in the late 1980s, made the remarks at an event hosted by the Asia Society in New York. The company has helped the democratically governed island of Taiwan become the world's leading producer of advanced chips. According to Reuters, shares around the world fell and U.S. Treasury yields retreated on Thursday as investors digested mixed U.S. economic and corporate signals. The U.S. economy grew faster than expected in the third quarter again defying dire warnings of a recession, buoyed by robust consumer spending amid a resilient labor market.
But business investment softened as outlays on equipment declined and the boost from the construction of factories faded. According to Bloomberg, Western Digital Corp. fell as much as 16% after deal negotiations with Kioxia Holdings Corp. broke down, quashing hopes for a combination of their flash memory businesses. Discussions between the two companies have ended for now, according to a person familiar with the situation, following remarks by SK Hynix Inc. that it wouldn't support the merger. That company, the world's number two memory chip maker, is an indirect shareholder in Kioxia and felt the transaction would undervalue its stake. According to Reuters, a U.S. congressional committee questioned the U.S. Navy on Thursday over what it called alarming delays in weapons deliveries to Taiwan, asking why production sometimes languished for months or years after purchasing deals were signed. Time was running out to deter military action by China toward democratic self governing Taiwan which Beijing claims is its own territory, Rep. Mike Gallagher, chair of the House of Representatives Select Committee on China, along with Rep. Young Kim, said in the letter to Secretary of the Navy Carlos del Toro. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen on Thursday said U.S. third-quarter economic growth of nearly 5% was a good strong number that points to a soft landing for the U.S. economy but could help keep longer-dated bond yields elevated. It's a good strong number and shows the economy is doing well, Yellen said at a Bloomberg Live interview event. What we have looks like a soft landing. According to Reuters, Catalyst Pharmaceuticals said on Thursday that U.S. health regulators have approved its partner Santhra Pharmaceuticals drug to treat Duchenne muscular dystrophy, a rare muscle wasting disorder, in patients two years of age and older. Swiss firm Santhera had licensed the rights for the manufacturing and supply of the drug in North America to Catalyst. According to Reuters, Israel's El Al Airlines said on Thursday it was suspending flight service to Mumbai and Delhi indefinitely and was terminating some seasonal routes earlier than planned due to the country's war with Hamas militants and waning demand. Israel's flag carrier said it would cancel seasonal service to Dublin, Marseille and Tokyo on October 31. Those routes were due to terminate in the October to November period, it said. According to Reuters, Bible quoting, tough talking Sean Fain on Wednesday scored his first big victory against the Detroit Three through a tentative labor deal with Ford. But the jury is out on whether his aggressive bargaining tactics have soured worker relations with the automakers for a long time. Six weeks into escalating strikes and heated rhetoric, the United Auto Workers president extracted a record 25% wage hike for some 57,000 Ford motor workers in a tentative deal. According to Reuters, Wall Street closed lower on Thursday, dragged by tech and tech adjacent megacap shares as investors digested a slew of mixed quarterly earnings and signs of economic resiliency that could encourage the Federal Reserve to keep interest rates at a restrictive level for longer than expected. All three major U.S. stock indexes ended in the red. The tech-heavy Nasdaq was down the most, weighed down by the magnificent seven group of momentum stocks in the face of cloudy earnings guidance and the higher-for-longer interest rate scenario. According to Reuters, a group of Republican-led U.S. states on Thursday said they would appeal a Texas-based federal judge's decision rejecting their challenge to a rule from President Joe Biden's administration allowing employee retirement plans to consider environmental, social and governance issues in investment decisions. The 26 states, led by Texas and Utah, filed a notice of appeal in federal court in Amarillo. U.S. District Judge Matthew Kaczmarek threw out their lawsuit on September 21. Oil drilling company Liberty Energy Inc. and an oil and gas trade group are also plaintiffs in the case and joined in the appeal. According to Reuters, a U.S. business delegation dispatched to Northern Ireland by President Joe Biden talked up opportunities created by the region's bespoke post-Brexit trade arrangements on Thursday, but members acknowledged a political standoff had sown some doubts. The trade mission, announced by Biden during a visit to Belfast in April, was designed to help sell what the president described as the unprecedented economic opportunity created by the region's dual access to the United Kingdom and the European Union goods markets under the Windsor Framework Agreement. According to Reuters, the U.S. military on Thursday said a Chinese jet came dangerously close to a U.S. bomber earlier this week over the South China Sea, part of what Washington has said is increasingly risky behavior by Chinese military aircraft. 
The U.S. military said that on Tuesday a Chinese J-11 jet came within 10 feet of the B-52 aircraft. According to Reuters, Ford Motor County on Thursday withdrew its full-year results forecast due to the pending ratification of its deal with the United Auto Workers Union, sending shares of the company down 7% in aftermarket trade. The union and Ford on Wednesday reached a tentative agreement that included a 25% wage hike for 57,000 workers over four to half a year, ending a strike at some of the automaker's biggest factories. According to Reuters, Dash Amazon.com beat third quarter revenue estimates on Thursday as high interest rates failed to deter consumers from spending on its e commerce platform for everything from groceries to electronics. Shares of the online retailer and cloud major rose about 5% in extended trading. According to Reuters, Intel forecast fourth quarter revenue above Wall Street estimates on Thursday, optimistic of a healthy rebound in client orders for its chips after a several quarters long inventory buildup in the PC market eased. Shares of the Santa Clara, California based company rose 5% in trading after the closing bell. According to Reuters, U.S. auto safety officials said on Thursday they are investigating two additional reports of General Motors Robotaxi unit crews self-driving cars engaging in inappropriately hard braking and being struck by other vehicles. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said in December it had opened a formal safety probe into crews after reports of three crashes in which cruise vehicles were struck from behind by other vehicles after the autonomous vehicles braked quickly resulting in two injuries. According to Yahoo Finance, Intel will report its third quarter earnings after the closing bell on Thursday, as the chipmaker looks to capitalize on a rebound in the PC market. But reports that rival NVIDIA is working on its own ARM-based CPUs for Windows PCs could overshadow the announcement. Intel is expected to post revenue of $13.5 billion in the quarter, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. That's an 11.7% decline versus the $15.3 billion the company reported in the same period last year. Wall Street is anticipating adjusted earnings per share of $0.21, cents, down 64.2% year over year. According to Reuters, Canada's main stock index fell on Thursday for a seventh straight day as investors shifted their exposure from growth to defensive stocks, betting that elevated borrowing costs will slow the economy. The Toronto Stock Exchange's SP-TSX Composite Index ended down 72.54 points, or 0.4%, at 18,875.31, its lowest closing level since October 2022. The losing stake was the index's longest since September 2018. According to Reuters, the United States has information that the Russian military is executing soldiers who do not follow orders related to the war with Ukraine the White House said on Thursday. We have information that the Russian military has been actually executing soldiers who refuse to follow orders, White House spokesperson John Kirby told reporters. According to Reuters, Cincinnati Financial said on Thursday its third quarter profit more than doubled as the insurer earned more from net written premiums. Net written premiums were up at $1.96 billion for the quarter from $1.75 billion last year. According to Reuters, Capital One Financial on Thursday sailed past estimates for third quarter profit as the consumer lender charged higher interest rates on loans, sending its shares up more than 4% in extended trading. A rise in borrowing costs over the past year by the U.S. Federal Reserve has boosted profits at lenders as customers pay higher interest rates on everything from mortgages to their outstanding balances on credit cards. According to Bloomberg, Byron Wien, the longtime market strategist whose annual list of 10 surprises made him one of the most influential voices on Wall Street during a career at Blackstone Inc. and Morgan Stanley, has died. He was 90. He died Wednesday. Ween was at Blackstone for the past 14 years and most recently a vice chairman in the private wealth business, serving as a prognosticator of markets for the firm and its investors. According to Yahoo Finance, Chipotle reported its third quarter earnings results on Thursday after the market close, beating estimates on its earnings and same store sales. Its stock jumped 5% after the report. According to Reuters, the U.S. International Trade Commission on Thursday issued an order that could bar Apple from importing its Apple Watches after finding that the devices violate medical technology company Massimo's patent rights. 
The full commission upheld a judge's ruling from January that Apple violated Massimo's rights in light-based technology for reading biomarkers like heart rates and blood oxygen levels. According to Reuters, internet services firm Verisign reported a 5.4% jump in third-quarter revenue on Thursday, helped by steady demand in domain name registrations as more businesses expand their online presence. Businesses lately have been beefing up their online presence, in a move to digitize, with easy-to-remember domain names to capture a wider range of customers online. According to Reuters, Mohawk Industries reported a wider third-quarter loss on Thursday as the home floorings manufacturer took a one-time charge of $876 million after a review of its goodwill and intangible asset balances. Demand for home remodeling in the U.S. has declined as higher borrowing costs and dwindling household savings squeeze consumer spending. Overall housing supply also remains constrained, with residential construction activity subdued this year. According to Reuters, Toronto-based hedge fund firm Donville Kent Asset Management said Reitman's Canada Limited would make good use of capital if it eliminated its dual-class share structure and bought back stock, resulting in the Reitman family regaining control, according to a letter seen by Reuters. The hedge fund also encouraged the 97-year-old retailer to restore its listing on the main Toronto stock exchange, Donville Kent portfolio manager Jesse Gamble said in the letter dated October 12, which the firm provided to Reuters on Thursday. According to Bloomberg, Intel Corp. surged in late trading after predicting a return to sales growth in the fourth quarter, fueled by an improving personal computer market and a more competitive product line. Sales in the period will be $14.6 billion to $15.6 billion, Intel said in a statement Thursday, compared with an average analyst estimate of $14.4 billion. Excluding certain items, profit will be $0.44 cents a share. Analysts had projected 31 cents, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. According to Reuters, United Parcel Service on Thursday said it is spending more than $1 billion this quarter to buy two companies it hopes will bolster profit and volumes amid bare-knuckled market share battles with delivery rivals like FedEx. The world's biggest parcel delivery firm on Wednesday announced an agreement to buy happy returns from PayPal a deal that came roughly a month after it signaled its intent to purchase healthcare specialist MNX Global Logistics. The amount being spent on those deals was not previously announced. According to Reuters, Arthur J. Gallagher posted a rise in third-quarter profit on Thursday, helped by growth in its insurance brokerage and risk management units. Insurance brokerages serve as a bridge between an insurer and its customers, helping clients find a policy which best suits their needs. According to Reuters, Juniper Networks beat estimates for third-quarter revenue on Thursday as it benefited from higher network spending by cloud computing clients, sending its shares up 5% in extended trading. The results, which were reported on a preliminary basis, underscore a recovery in cloud and certain enterprise technology segments as customers shore up investment in critical infrastructure on signs of stabilization in the economy. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in Asian markets from Jamie McGeever, financial markets columnist. Asian markets look to round off a difficult week with a flourish on Friday, but ominous signals from U.S. trading on Thursday. Stocks closed in the red again despite a steep decline in bond yields, do not augur well. According to Bloomberg, Chile's central bank surprised most analysts by slowing the pace of monetary easing for the second straight meeting as the plunge in the peso stokes inflation fears. Policymakers led by Rosanna Costa cut borrowing costs half a percentage point to 9% on Thursday, as expected by 5 of 22 analysts in a Bloomberg survey. 16 others had forecast a second straight reduction of three quarters of a percentage point, while one predicted a full percentage point drop. According to Bloomberg, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway faces accusations it violated the terms of a more than $10 billion acquisition of truck stop chain pilot travel centers by changing the accounting methods used to value part of the deal, according to an unsealed lawsuit. Berkshire originally acquired about 39% of Pilot Flying J, a truck stop provider closely held by Cleveland Browns owner Jimmy Haslam and his family, for $2.75 billion in 2017. The deal called for Buffett to buy a controlling share by this year. The billionaire paid $8.2 billion for another 41% stake in January, 
meaning he now owns 80% of the business, according to the suit. According to Reuters, Liverpool thrashed Toulouse 5-1 at Anfield to reach the halfway point of the Europa League group stage with a perfect record, while Brighton Hove Albion secured their first win in European football with a 2-0 home win over Ajax Amsterdam on Thursday. Diogo Hoda opened the scoring for Liverpool after nine minutes, embarking on a solo run that saw him navigate past four defenders before planting the ball into the bottom corner. According to Reuters, Brazilian playmaker Embraer said on Thursday its firm order backlog reached $17.8 billion at the end of the third quarter, including a newly announced order by Skywest for 19 of its E-175 jets. Its backlog grew by $500 million from the previous quarter, Embraer said in a securities filing. According to Yahoo Finance, Sam Bankman Fried took the witness stand Thursday in a hearing intended to help a judge rule on whether the FTX founder can testify in front of a jury about how advice from FTX lawyers impacted key decisions he made at the cryptocurrency exchange. Bankman Fired said under questioning from his defense attorney Mark Cohen that he believed that his trading firm Alameda Research was allowed to borrow customer money deposited with FTX due to a terms of service document that was drafted with help from FTX's top lawyer. According to Reuters, the U.S. Federal Energy Regulatory Commission on Thursday agreed to a revised commissioning plan for Venture Global LNG's Calcasieu Pass facility allowing it to turn on three processing trains while work on faulty power equipment continues. The FERC decision supports Venture Global LNG's argument that it cannot start full commercial operations because it has reliability issues, said Alex Munton, director of Global Gas LNG Research at consulting group, Rapid & Energy. According to Reuters, Sundar Pichai, chief executive of Alphabet and its subsidiary Google, will testify on Monday in the once-in-a-generation antitrust fight over Google's dominance of search and some parts of search advertising. The Take According to Reuters, U.S. timber company Weyerhaeuser reported a fall in third-quarter profit on Thursday, hurt by lower sales of its wood products. Demand for products such as plywood used in residential construction projects has come under pressure as two-decade high mortgage rates keep aspiring homeowners from the housing market. According to Bloomberg, Amazon.com Inc. reported revenue and profit that topped analysts' estimates, buoyed by rising sales in its retail unit and significant cost-cutting. Third quarter revenue gained 13% to $143.1 billion, Amazon said Thursday in a statement. Analysts, on average, estimated $141.6 billion, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Operating income increased to $11.2 billion, compared with $2.5 billion in the period a year ago. Analysts, on average, estimated $7.71 billion. According to Reuters, Eli Lilly and County said on Thursday that the U.S. health regulator had approved its drug for treating adults with moderate to severe active ulcerative colitis, a type of chronic inflammatory bowel disease. The drug, which will be available in the United States in coming weeks and sold under brand name Omvo, is among Lilly's potential growth drivers for this decade alongside terzepatide for obesity, lebricizumab for atopic dermatitis or eczema and pirtobrutini B for cancer. According to Reuters, European Union leaders urged pauses in Israeli bombing and Hamas rocket attacks so humanitarian aid could be delivered to Gaza and U.S. President Joe Biden told Iran's supreme leader not to target U.S. personnel in the Mideast. Israel's military, which has been carrying out limited raids into Gaza as it prepares for a ground incursion of the enclave, said early on Friday it was currently conducting raids in the Gaza Strip as part of preparations for the next stage of the operation. According to Reuters, the steepest jump in interest rates in decades will spark a domino effect on corporate defaults in the years ahead, Asset manager Janice Henderson Investors said in a report on Friday. Rising borrowing costs are back in stark focus following a rout in government bonds since September as investors adjust to the prospect of interest rates staying persistently high, which has also raised corporate bond yields. According to Bloomberg, Asian equities looked poised for a mixed open Friday as big tech stocks on Wall Street rallied in late trading following solid earnings. U.S. share futures advanced. Contracts on the Nasdaq 100 gained in the Asian session after the underlying benchmark fell 1.9% on Thursday.
Amazon.com Inc. and Intel Corp. Both gained in after trading hours after the tech-heavy index hit its lowest since May. According to Reuters, the United States and China have disagreements and need, in-depth, and comprehensive dialogue to reduce misunderstandings and stabilize ties, China's foreign minister, Wang Yi, said on Thursday, kicking off a long-anticipated visit to Washington. Standing next to U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Wang said the two countries share important common interests and challenges that they need to resolve together. According to Reuters, Byron Wien, who guided investors on what to buy and sell and authored a widely anticipated yearly list of 10 surprises, as one of Wall Street's most prominent and enduring market strategists, has died, Blackstone Inc. said in a statement. Wien was 90. According to Reuters, core consumer inflation in Japan's capital Tokyo, considered a leading indicator of nationwide trends, hit 2.7% in October, data showed on Friday, accelerating from the previous month in a sign of broadening price pressures. The year-on-year -year increase in the core consumer price index, which excludes volatile fresh food but includes fuel costs, compared with a median market forecast for a 2.5% gain. It was faster than a 2.5% rise in September. According to Reuters, Manchester United's goalkeeper, Andre Onana, said teammate Alejandro Garnacho should not face any repercussions for his use of gorilla emojis in a recent social media post. The 19-year-old Garnacho included the emojis in a post featuring a photo of himself and Onana celebrating the Cameroonian goalkeeper's remarkable save of an injury time penalty against FC Copenhagen on Tuesday. According to Reuters, the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine said on Thursday that Ukrainian pilots were undergoing training in the United States on F-16 fighter aircraft, a key element on Kyiv's wish list to secure the weaponry it needs in its war against Russia. The U.S. approved sending F-16's fighter jets to Ukraine from the Netherlands and Denmark in August once pilot training is completed. According to Bloomberg, Shares of solar equipment maker Enphase Energy Inc. slumped after the company reported lower revenue amid a substantial drop in U.S. and European demand that will likely last into next year. Third quarter sales missed estimates and were down 13% from the year-ago period, the company said in a statement Thursday. U.S. revenue, which fell 16% from the previous quarter, was pulled down by high interest rates and California's recent changes to how solar homeowners are compensated for excess electricity they sell to the grid. European sales fared even worse, tumbling 34% from the previous period. According to Bloomberg, Nigeria's first lithium processing plant launched to great fanfare this month with the backing of three companies that, at first glance, look a lot like heavyweights of China's battery metals industry. But the trio of firms behind the planned $250 million investment, Gangfeng Lithium Industry Limited, Tianqi Lithium Industrial Limited and Ningda Era Industrial Limited, have nothing to do with three nearly identically named behemoths listed on the Shenzhen and Hong Kong stock exchanges. Instead, the West African country's corporate register shows they are wholly local ventures controlled by Chinese nationals that were founded last year at an address in a medium-sized southwestern Nigerian town. According to Bloomberg, another 10% decline in a major Chinese equity gauge may trigger a wave of selling in index futures tied to structured products, adding fresh risks to the slumping stock market. Investors face losses in complex snowball derivatives at maturity when a benchmark falls below a so-called knock-in level. For those tied to the CSI small cap 500 index, the average threshold is 4,865, according to estimates by China International Capital Corp. The gauge closed at 5,398.93 on Thursday. According to Bloomberg, Xinjiang Gold Wind Science Technology Company, the largest wind turbine maker, said third quarter profit tumbled in another blow to a renewables sector reeling from the impact of lower prices even as demand jumps. The producer's net income fell 98% to 9.4 million yuan in the three months ended September 30 from a year earlier, the company said Thursday in a statement. Sales volumes in the first nine months were 8.9 gigawatts, up more than a quarter on the same period in 2022. According to Reuters, oil prices rose on Friday, regaining ground after tumbling more than $2 a barrel in the previous session as concerns of a wider Middle East conflict eased while the United States, the world's biggest oil consumer, showed signs of weakening demand. 
Brent crude futures climbed 45 cents, or 0.5%, to $88.38 a barrel by 0019 GMT, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate was at $83.63 a barrel, up 42 cents, or 0.5%. According to Bloomberg, oil headed for a weekly drop as bearishness in financial markets and dollar strength outweighed fears the Israel-Hamas war will escalate and jeopardize supply from the Middle East. West Texas Intermediate edged higher on Friday to near $84 a barrel, but was down around 6% for the week. Global benchmark Brent traded close to $88. Iran's foreign minister said the U.S. won't escape unaffected if the conflict widens after Washington said Tehran was ultimately to blame for a spate of drone attacks on American forces. Israel said it had killed the deputy head of intelligence of Hamas. According to Reuters, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway is being sued by the billionaire Haslam family, which accused the conglomerate of using improper accounting to devalue its remaining 20% stake in Pilot Travel Centers, the largest U.S. truck stop operator. The family, including Cleveland Browns football team owner Jimmy Haslam, sold Berkshire a 38.6% pilot stake for $2.8 billion in 2017 and another 41.4% stake for $8.2 billion in January. It said it has a right to sell the remainder under the same valuation methods on January 1, 2024. According to Reuters, the dollar was headed for a weekly gain on Friday aided by solid U.S. growth figures that bolstered the case for higher for longer interest rates, while the yen hovered on the weaker side of $150 per dollar ahead of a key policy meeting next week. The U.S. economy grew at its fastest pace in nearly two years in the third quarter as higher wages from a tight labor market helped to power consumer spending, data on Thursday showed. According to Reuters, China's former premier Li Keqiang has died of a sudden heart attack aged 68, state media said on Friday. Comrade Li Keqiang, while resting in Shanghai in recent days, experienced a sudden heart attack on October 26 and after all-out efforts to revive him failed, died in Shanghai at 10 minutes past midnight on October 27, state broadcaster CCTV reported. According to Bloomberg, the frenzy around Huawei Technologies company linked shares has hauled them to the top of Asia's key benchmark in an otherwise grueling month for equity markets. Suppliers and partners to the Chinese tech giant make up a majority of the top 10 gainers this month on the MSCI Asia-Pacific Index. Huawei's electric vehicle partner Sarah's Group Company is leading gains with an advance of more than 48% while software supplier iSoftstone Information Technology Group Company is up 29%. The benchmark has lost more than 4% in October, touching an 11-month low. According to Bloomberg, Another billionaire has been minted thanks to the online shopping boom that's expanding from China to Southeast Asia. JT Global Express Limited is set to start trading Friday in Hong Kong's second biggest debut of 2023, leaving its founder Lee, Jet, Jia with a $1.5 billion net worth, according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. The courier company, which provides delivery services for online stores like Shine and Pinduoduo, raised $500 million in the initial public offering. According to Reuters, newly elected U.S. Speaker of the House Mike Johnson said on Thursday that funding to support Ukraine and Israel should be handled separately, suggesting he will not back President Joe Biden's $106 billion aid package for both countries. Johnson, who was speaking in an interview on Fox News, said he met with Biden on Thursday and said he told White House staff, our consensus among House Republicans is we need to bifurcate those issues. According to Reuters, Profits at China's industrial firms extended gains for a second month in September, adding to signs of a stabilizing economy as the authorities launched a burst of supportive policy measures. The 11.9% year-on-year rise came on the back of a surprise 17.2% gain in August, and follows stronger than expected industrial and consumption activity over September. According to Bloomberg, lithium mining giant SQM has won over Perth-based Azure Minerals Limited. With a sweetened $1.6 billion Australian dollars cash offer, the latest deal is large battery metal producers' race to secure supply in Australia, home to some of the world's richest deposits. Azure's board will back the new binding bid from SQM, which increased its cash offer by 52% to $3 Australian dollars and 52 cents per share, the Australian producer said Thursday. 
That's a 44% premium over Azure's closing price on October 20th, and follows a previously rejected non-binding offer of $2.31 Australian made in August. According to Reuters, Asian shares tracked Wall Street futures higher on Friday as Amazon provided some welcome earnings relief, while bonds were able to sustain a rally amid signs U.S. inflation was easing. All eyes were on U.S. data later in the session that may show core inflation growing 0.3% in September on a monthly basis, pushing the annual rate lower to 3.7% from 3.9% a month ago. According to Reuters, Volvo Group owned Mack Trucks said Thursday the United Auto Workers contract demands are unrealistic and that no new talks are scheduled after workers went on strike on October 9, following their rejection of a proposed five-year contract. About 73% of the unit's 4,000 workers in Pennsylvania, Florida and Maryland voted against a tentative agreement that included a 19% pay raise that had been endorsed by UAW leaders. According to Bloomberg, inflation is proving so sticky in Australia that the institution responsible for taming prices is itself facing the threat of strike action by staff demanding fatter paychecks. Reserve Bank Governor Michelle Bullock told a Senate panel on Thursday that she doesn't know, if the job is done yet, on containing prices. A day earlier, the finance sector union dismissed the RBA's latest pay offer, saying it would leave staff in financial hardship for years to come, and it's up to the governor to demonstrate she values bank employees. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average rose 1.5% on Friday after falling to its worst day in three weeks in the previous session, with chip-related stocks leading the recovery. The Nikkei had gained 1.54% to 31,070.36 by the midday break, after losing 2.14% in the previous session in its sharpest fall since October 4. The broader Topix was up 1.42% at 2,255.79. According to Bloomberg, embattled debt investors like the look of 5% Treasury yields as they weigh the risk versus reward scales for the world's biggest bond market. The rise in yields to levels last seen before the financial crisis reflects a run of solid data, with the U.S. economy growing last quarter at the fastest pace since 2021. And a rising tide of Treasury debt issuance, meanwhile, has prompted the return of a positive risk premium for owning longer-dated bonds. According to Bloomberg, Changho Bridge Credit Agricultural Group Company, a Chinese rural bank that offers microcredit and microinsurance to small businesses, is considering a Hong Kong initial public offering that could raise as much as $500 million, according to people familiar with the matter. The Ant Group company-backed company is working with China International Capital Corp. and UBS Group AG on the preparations of the listing, which could happen as soon as next year, the people said. The share sale could raise $300 million to $500 million depending on market conditions, said the people, who asked not to be identified as the information is private. According to Bloomberg, Indonesia's central bank isn't ruling out an out-of-cycle rate increase, after the only analyst who predicted its surprise hike last week called for such a move in neighboring Philippines in scheduled tightening this week. As a possibility, it is always there even if it is very small, Bank Indonesia's spokesman Erwin Haryono said on late Thursday after the Philippines delivered a 25 basis point in scheduled rate hike. But so far, the policy response delivered during the latest Board of Governors meeting is sufficient. According to Reuters, below are reactions to the death on Friday of Chinese former Premier Li Keqiang. Adam Ni, nee, independent China political analyst, author. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. won't be able to stop Chinese firms from semiconductor manufacturing International Corp. to Huawei Technologies Company from making progress in chip technology, according to one of the semiconductor industry's leading figures. SMIC and Huawei which stunned Washington by unveiling a made-in-China phone processor, can use existing older machines to make even more sophisticated silicon, said Bern J. Lin, a former Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing company vice president. SMIC should be able to advance to the next generation at 5 nanometers with machines from ASML holding NV that it already operates, said Lin, who at TSMC championed the lithography technology that transformed chipmaking. According to Bloomberg, Senator Joe Manchin called on the Biden administration to swiftly auction drilling rights in the Gulf of Mexico, 
following a federal appeals court ruling Thursday that casts doubt on the future of that oil lease sale. Shrinking or further delaying lease sale 261 threatens both our energy security and climate goals and could make us more dependent on dirty foreign oil and gas, Manchin, a West Virginia Democrat, said following the ruling by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in Louisiana.